When we think of spring, we think of the lovely nature. We think of beautiful flowers, of green grass, nice sunshine, of fresh smell and general warmth and niceness. But 66 million years ago, there came a spring one day that brought upon the destruction of 75% of all life, changing the history of the planet and life forever. I'm talking, of course, about the end of the dinosaurs, about the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event when an asteroid struck Earth near what is today Mexico. In this video, we'll learn of new findings where scientists have analyzed fish fossils and concluded which season and even which month the asteroid struck Earth. In turn, this affected the northern hemisphere and the southern hemisphere in different ways because animals were either coming out of hibernation or going into hibernation and this changed the rates at which the two hemispheres ecosystems recovered. In this video, we'll look at how scientists concluded when the asteroid struck and what was happening in the world at the time. I'm Sandhya Ramesh and this is Pure Science. The Cretaceous Paleogene extinction event occurred after the Cretaceous period and marking the beginning of the Paleogene. It occurred about 65 to 66 million years ago, give or take 11,000 years, when an asteroid, which is estimated to have been 10 to 15 kilometers across, headed straight for Earth. Not straight, it struck at an angle and it struck at the Gulf of Mexico's Yucatan Peninsula. It created a crater 20 kilometers below the surface. The crater is nearly 180 kilometers wide and it's called the Chicxulub Crater. It is one of the largest confirmed impact craters on Earth and was discovered in the 1970s. In the 1980s, Luis and Walter Alvarez and their team were studying rocks. We know that large rocky structures, the ground below us, are all sediments and have layers that have formed over millions of years. The team noticed that sedimentary layers all over the world's rocks at the Cretaceous Paleogene boundary had a layer of iridium that was of very high concentration. The amounts were 100 times more than what is normally found on Earth and it was uniform. The deposits were found all around the world in the rocks. So naturally something must have deposited iridium all across the world. Iridium is rare in Earth's crust, the outer layer. So the team argued that only an asteroid impact could have deposited this much of iridium on the Earth's surface. This idea of an asteroid impact was very controversial at the time in the 80s. Those of us who grew up in the 90s would remember that when we were kids, many popular books and stories kept saying that how the dinosaurs died was a mystery and some scientists believed that it was an asteroid. Today, however, the theory is pretty much widely accepted because there is enough evidence to confirm an asteroid impact causing the extinction event. One, the largest piece of evidence, the so-called smoking gun, of course, is the Chicxulub crater, which was announced in a 1991 paper. The idea still was controversial and offered up alternate explanations until 2010, when a landmark multidisciplinary paper was published, settling the issue. Researchers have since discovered fossil sites where, after the asteroid struck, it shook Earth and caused water bodies to slosh around, making water spill out of the water bodies onto land, leading to floods and immediate and sudden mass deaths. It is also thought that the impact intensified the volcanism at the Deccan Traps, which was long held as an alternate theory to the extinction event. The eruption was a slow basaltic flow, not an explosive volcanic eruption. And this eruption went on for thousands and thousands of years. It was ongoing before the asteroid impact and also went on after, slowly forming the layers of the Indian subcontinent. This week, scientists have announced evidence that the Chicxulub impactor hit the Earth in spring. They concluded this by studying a site called Tanis in the Hell Creek Formation in the US. This site is a treasure trove of fossil finds. It is a hotbed for fossil research and has also shown many rich finds previously, such as 
mass flood burial sites during the Cretaceous Paleogene extinction. From here, the research team studied fossils of fish. They got hold of six fossils, three were sturgeon and three were of paddlefish. When the bones from the lower jaws and pectoral fins were sliced from paddlefish fossils, researchers saw dark and light alternating lines showing changes in seasonality. This is similar to tree rings. The outer parts of the bones are fish becoming more active and developing stronger and faster growth at the end of winter. Variations in levels of carbon isotope in bones indicate how much plankton was in the water for fish to eat. The amount was lesser than it would be during the summer when plankton peak in abundance but it was more than it would be in the winter or approaching autumn when they start to decline. This was another bit of evidence that they had which further confirmed that the fish died in spring. Bone cell density and volume in the fish fossils indicate that they were on the rise but not peaked yet, so growth stopped abruptly in spring. Scientists guess that the month of the impact, depending on the season in what Mexico was then like, would probably have been April. In the northern hemisphere, the dinosaurs would have hibernated in the winter and would have been roaming around and mating in spring. In the southern hemisphere, it would have been the opposite, where animals would be getting ready to go into hibernation. Another paper last year also had similar conclusions, again after studying fish. What happened when the asteroid struck makes for actually very fascinating reading. When the asteroid touched our atmosphere, its speed and its mass was so great that it compressed the air, superheating it and creating plasma that was over 10,000 degrees Celsius in temperature. It would strike a few minutes later, but the heat would have wiped out all life within a certain radius. When the asteroid struck the surface, it would have produced a shockwave that would have radiated around the world with winds at speeds of over a thousand kilometers per hour. This would have killed large animals and vegetation for a radius of about 1500 kilometers from impact. Then giant seismic waves would have rolled out. The seismic waves would have caused landslides in different parts of the world which would have led to tsunamis and the impact itself would have led to giant tsunamis. There would have been tsunamis in all oceans all around the world. At the site where the asteroid hit Earth, molten rock and debris would have gone up into the air forming a peak of material that was probably greater than Mount Everest. All this ejecta would have started to rain down to Earth from space after about 40 minutes or so globally. A large chunk of this material fell down as tectites, which are pieces of molten rock that go up into space and then freeze and solidify and fall down as pieces of glass. Authors of this paper discovered that in the fish fossils, there were tectites trapped in fish gills but not in their digestive tract, which meant that they were in the water and would have died immediately. The ejecta would have fallen for hours, causing a spike in infrared radiation, basically cooking all exposed life forms and burning them. A cloud of dust would have blocked out sunlight for a year. Without photosynthesis, large amounts of vegetation would have died, leading to a collapse of food chains globally. Acid rain would have fallen and the blocking of sunlight is thought to have caused a drop of 7 degrees Celsius for decades after the impact. Aerosols from the impact itself took 10 years to dissipate. The organisms that survived the most were basically the ones in soil that fed off rotting dead matter. There are a couple of articles linked in the description below that are even more detailed and descriptive. It reports on the Tanis finding and explores a flood evidence site there. These findings help us understand why only some animals survived and some ecosystems survived better than the others, how mammals lived life after the extinction event, how and why the northern hemisphere was more damaged and took longer to recover, whereas the southern hemisphere recovered twice as fast. The Tanis site continues to be an immense source of information about this extinction event and there will likely be even more findings from studying fossils here in the future.